Hey guys, in this video we're going to go over the G0602 apron and the uh, Z-axis ball nut mount. These are really basic parts, there's only two of them, and uh, it was a little bit of a pain getting the ball nut mount placed accurately, but um, yeah, I'm going to show you the uh, 3D drawings, and first just this clip here, uh, or not clip, this is just a screenshot of um, what it looks like while I was building it. Uh, and it's not complete in this ver in in this shot, but now let's go take a look at the Fusion 360 file. And here you can see uh, it's just um, it, it's really basic. You've got two drilled and tapped holes on the top. Uh, I don't have these four holes in the front modeled as being tapped, but they are uh, quarter twenty, I believe. The top ones are five sixteenths eighteen, and then these two over here are also five eighteenths or five sixteenths eighteen, and they're counterboard for the uh, for the head of that cap screw, and nothing fancy on the back. This big clearance notch down at the bottom is for the x-axis uh, uh, motor to slide up inside of, and that is pretty much it. So now let me go ahead and show you the uh, the ball nut mount. So uh, this kind of sits in this orientation and the, uh, the ball nut flange bolts to these six uh, drilled and tapped holes. This hole on the top, uh, that's optional. I'm actually not using that right now and it hasn't been a problem. And then these are drilled and tapped uh, 5 16 18 and that is for the, uh, uh, for the apron. So let's go ahead and take a look at all of it. Also, uh, you can get all of these for free on my GrabCAD account. Go to uh, GrabCAD.com and just search for Rust Stuff or G0602 CNC, anything like that, and you'll find all these files. You can download them and use them. Uh, so here we are. Uh, this is the full... Um, well, we're not going to go over, I guess, all of these pieces. Well, yeah, maybe we should real quick, actually. So... Uh, these screw lengths are not accurate. So if you use this model and download it, please do not use these screw lengths as actual screw lengths. Um, I guess I should put a note on that in the GrabCAD file. But here you can see the two parts I'm talking about, uh, the ball nut mount and the apron. And then using some standoffs, and of course those are all modeled, uh, you can see those over here. Uh, here's the stepper plate. Uh, this is what the stepper mount actually mounts to. They're machined with slots. And this allows uh, this plate to slide up and down for tensioning the belt. I don't have the belt modeled because it didn't seem necessary. And you can see uh, there's enough clearance back here. It passes underneath the screw, but it doesn't hit the casting uh, because the casting starts just outside of this uh, edge. And uh, yeah, it's it's nice and compact. It got the the motor down out of the way, which is what I wanted. I Most of the conversions I've seen, or at least a lot of them, have the motor sticking out the front here, and it's right in your chest uh, while you're working. Um, and uh, it's just really annoying. So I always knew from the beginning I was going to mount mine as low and out of the way as possible. Now, you'll notice that these two pulleys are different sizes. Um, that is because uh, I'm using a two to one gear reduction, basically half the speed, double the torque. Uh, that's probably not necessary, but it's something that I wanted to do. And these part numbers are listed in video number two, the Excel spreadsheet. So if you, if you plan on doing it the same way, then by all means go ahead and, uh, and use those same part numbers. I want to say this is a 44 tooth and this is a 22, 44, 22, something like that. So uh, now let me uh, switch over to um, Premiere and we'll go through the footage. Okay, so this is a slightly different angle. My idea for figuring out where to drill the hole for the ball nut uh, was to use feeler gauges and measure the distance between this side of the casting uh, or that top edge, the very, very top of that line, that part of the casting up against the uh, block, and then the underside of the way to the top edge of the block. And then knowing the dimensions of the bearing blocks for the Z-axis screw, I figured I could very accurately place uh, the hole for the ball nut. Now this ended up not working at all. And uh, luckily, I had the forethought to not machine it to the final size the first time. So I only machined about a one-inch diameter hole, or maybe it was uh, three-quarter, something like that. And then I was able to install the ball screw and, um, 
And then using an awl, I scratched this circle uh, around the ball nut um, to make sure that it was concentric with the hole that I'd already machined. And it wasn't at all. <laughs> so um, what I did was, uh, well, here you can see in this shot that the the circle is slightly offset to the right. So I just measured the location of the circle the best I could with some calipers. And I went back into CAD and moved it. And then I remachined it. And it worked out perfectly. I think I had to come back one more time just to take an extra like 10 thou or 20 thou uh, for a little bit of clearance. But that was it. It doesn't need to be an accurate fit. Um, again, it just needs to be accurate enough so that when you drill these six mounting uh, holes or drill and tap these holes for the mounting bolts, uh, you don't get into the, you know, into the wall of that, of that large bore. And so... Uh, yeah, it worked perfectly. Uh, here it is installed, and in this shot, I'm just farting around. Uh, you don't need to install this hole that I'm drilling and tapping right here. You can just uh, forget that one. But uh, yeah, it worked out great. So uh, that's everything for this video. Um, thanks for watching, and I've got tons more content uh, to be rolled out. I just need to get time to do it. Um, I'll see you in the next video.